In this video, we're going to provide a quick overview of Articulate Storyline. We're going to look at the features and the way it's laid out, and we'll also review some of the key features that are required to build interactive e-learning. Before we get started, let me point out a few of the free resources that you have. The first one is that you notice we have these Getting Started videos. I highly encourage that you watch those. Most of the videos are under 10 minutes long. They have some good instruction. There's some practice activities. And they really teach you how to use the tool. So if you're just getting started or you want to know how to use Articulate Storyline, then this is a resource you want to use. We also have additional tutorials that will provide more detail about the specific features. If you ever have any questions, take advantage of Articulate's eLearning Heroes community. We have some great discussions. If you have questions, post them in the community and you'll get some answers quickly. The other thing is we have all sorts of resources available to you. There's free templates and downloads and graphics, some articles and things to help you learn more about e-learning. And then take advantage of the free resources because they'll speed up your production time. So let's go ahead and get started. When you first open Storyline, you'll see a screen like this. If you want to create a new project, you just click up here. If you're creating a software simulation or you want to record a screencast, you can start here. Then of course you can import content. So we have PowerPoint files. You can import Articulate Studio content. And you can also import other Storyline content. We're going to go ahead and look at a course. When you first open a course, you'll be inside a Story View. And Story View is going to provide that big picture overview of your course. So it shows the flow and structure. You can see that we have two scenes. Scenes are really just a collection of slides. So this is Scene 1. This is Scene 2. It really doesn't matter how you use the scenes. So you can use them a number of ways. And then inside of Scene 1, we can see we've got a number of slides. And we can kind of see the flow of the course. So it's kind of linear. And then it branches out based on different decisions you make on slide 1.2. Now in a general sense, you just see these gray arrows. So they kind of show you the flow. If I actually click on a slide, you can see that the gray arrows change. And then I, I get to see the actual triggers on the slide. So these red arrows represent the triggers. And I can roll over them. This one has more, so let's click on that. And you can see it's showing me where those triggers go. If I want to change them, I can just click on an arrow and it'll open up the trigger wizard. Or I can come over here, I can see I have a triggers panel and I have slide properties panel. At this point, I can change whatever I want to on the triggers for that particular slide and I can also modify that slide's properties. This is a good place to go when you do troubleshooting on your course. Instead of clicking in and out of the slides, you can go to the Story View, click on a slide, look at the triggers, look at the properties. And a lot of times you can make your adjustments right from there. Now let's go ahead and create a new scene and then we'll work on a blank slide. So we've got a new scene here. We'll click on that. And you can see if I zoom out that I've got my new scene here. And then inside a new scene I have my slide. So I'm going to double click on the slide. Now let's look at the options that we have when we're editing slides. Storyline gives you a freeform editing environment. That means that you could put whatever you want to on the screen and you can move it around and size it and do whatever you want to. When we look at the layout, we can see here we have our scene slides. Over here we have our timeline, our states panel, and our notes panel. So you can add your slide notes here. And then over here we have our triggers panel and our slide layers. Now when you're authoring in Storyline, you have three main authoring components. You have your states, your slide layers, and your triggers. And in a general sense, when you build your interactive e-learning, you're always going to work with states, layers, and triggers. Now if we look at the options that we have on top of the ribbon toolbar, you've got your Home tab. And here you can see you have a rich text editor. So a lot of things you can do if you have text on your screen. If you go to Insert, this is where you'll insert content on your slide. So you can see we have some core groups. There's the slide group, the illustrations, media, and text groups. And then over here we have our interactive groups. So these are interactive objects. So I can click on controls. I can insert buttons and sliders and hotspots. So all the things I need to build interactive e-learning. Then we also have some pre-built markers to speed up some of your production. So you kind of have your static group. So we're going to insert things onto the slide. And then you have your interactive group when you want to create interactive capability on the slide. If you go up to the Design tab, the Design tab, kind of a few key components. One is you can change the size of your file. So click on Story. And you can see that by default, we pull in a 4 by 3 or 720 by 540 aspect ratio. You can always change that. 
or you can go with a 16-9 aspect ratio. So these are usually the two most common. And then of course you can customize that and make it whatever dimension you want it to be. And then over here we have our design themes. The design themes are kind of made up of three main components. You have the look or background. In this sense we have these options here. Then you have color schemes. So you can choose from a number of color schemes. And then you have your font themes as well. Now you can always customize those. You can click up here on colors and you can create your own color theme. So if you need to follow certain branding requirements or you want a color theme set that works with your course, you can do that yourself. And then you can also do the same thing with your fonts. We have slide transitions. So you can set transitions for your slides. Also set transitions for your layers. Animations. There's three main components to the animations. There's an entrance animation, which we see right here, exit animations, and then we have our motion paths. And then you have your view tab. You have your slide masters. So in this example, you can see I've got a slide master and then I've got a number of layouts. And you can create as many layouts as you want. You can also create multiple slide masters. When you import PowerPoint files, it'll import the slide master. So you'll see those in your slide master as well. And again, you can apply theme colors and all that to those. The other thing we'll look at here in the View tab are the Feedback Masters. So in this case you can see we've got a few Feedback Master slides. Generally it's what you see when you create a slide and you get those pre-built layers and you get the feedback slides with the little gray boxes. But you can customize those and then they're applied to your slide layers. So you can customize them for your quiz questions or assessments. And you can also pre-build some Feedback Masters just to use on your slide layers. So those are probably the two key parts when you're looking at the View tab. And then of course there's all sorts of help available to you. So tutorials, blog posts, questions, technical support, anything we can do to help you be successful we're committed to doing. Now whenever you want to preview or publish your course, you can just hit on the preview button. And then of course you can publish your course. When you click on that you can see you've got some pretty standard publishing options. You can publish for web and then you can set all of the requirements. By default we publish to Flash. You can also publish HTML5 and then you can publish for the mobile player either iOS or Android. I usually select all three. This way when I publish I always have those three options available to me and I don't have to republish. Now let's build a simple interaction so we can see how states, layers, and triggers work. We're going to insert a character, a caption, and a button. So we'll go to Insert. I'm going to choose Caption first. And I've got my caption here. Draw it on the screen. Now I'm going to choose a character. I'm just going to choose one of the illustrated characters. And each character has some built-in expressions. And we can actually trigger these as state changes. And each character has a number of poses. And then down here you can change the perspective. We're just going to insert the default character. Now that the character is on the screen, I'm going to crop her so that we can see her a little bit bigger. And then we'll scale her. And let's put her on screen. And let's take the caption and we'll move the little tail here. So now we have a character and what we want to do is two things. We want to create an interaction where I click a button and I change the expression of the character by changing the character's state. And then I also want to change the feedback that the character provides when I click the button by showing a layer. So let's insert a button. And we'll just put the button here. Now before we start working on the interaction, let's go to the timeline. You can see that we have our objects on the timeline. The first thing you want to do when you add objects to the timeline is to title them. So I'm going to call this my happy button. This right here, characters, I like to give names. So Susan. And then this we'll just call us our feedback. So we've now titled the objects on the screen. It's going to be a lot easier to recognize them when you start creating triggers and working with your slide layers. So we've got our character, we've got our caption, we've got a button. So let's go ahead and do a state change first. If you come to the States tab and you select an object, we'll select the buttons. You can see the buttons have pre-built states. And that sense of interactivity that you get with the button you can see here. So we can go from a normal state to a hover. So when I'm hovering the mouse over or when I click down. So when you're interacting with the screen, that sense of interactivity or that sense of touching the screen comes from these state changes. We're going to create a state change on this character by using a trigger. So we've got our character. 
And we can see down here that there's only a normal state, which is the default state. Now what we want to do is create a trigger that when we click this button, we change the state of this character to something different. The cool thing with Storyline is these characters have those built-in expressions. So we can actually trigger a state change to those expressions and Storyline will build the states for us. Otherwise, we'd have to go into Edit States and then create our own states. So let's go ahead and create a trigger. The triggers are over here and this is the action part of Storyline. This is where you determine what should happen when you're doing things on the screen. I always talk to the triggers. What do I want to do? When do I want to do it? So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a trigger on the button. So what do I want to do? I want to, here are my common triggers. I want to change the state of Susan to, and here are the built-in expressions and we'll say to happy when the user clicks on that happy button. So let's go ahead and hit OK. And now I can read the trigger. Change the state of Susan to happy when the user clicks this button. So let's preview this. Now I've got my slide. Click on the button and she changes to happy. So that's because the trigger was set to change the state of this character to happy. Now if we come back to the slide and click on the character, we can see that storyline built a happy state. Now we want to look at how triggers and slide layers work. So we're going to create a basic layer and that will provide our feedback here in the box. So I'm going to create a new layer and we'll call this the happy layer. And what I want to do is add some text. So you can see I kind of have this onion skinned or grayed out version. This just shows me what's behind the layer, which is our main slide. And what I want to do is just add some content on here. So we're going to add a text box. And we'll just say that she is happy. I am happy. So she's happy. We're going to just select our text. We can make it larger and make it fill the box. So this looks good. Now what we have is we have a slide layer that when we click on it will show the I am happy text. So we need to create another trigger. We can select that button again. It doesn't matter how many triggers you have. That's okay. In this case, we're going to have two triggers on the single button. So we're going to create a new trigger. What do I want to do? I want to show layer. Choose my layer. And when do I want to do it? When the user clicks the happy button. And I can see it again here on the happy button. I have show layer when the user clicks. So now when we preview this, her state should change and this layer should show. So let's go ahead and preview. Click the button. State changed and the layer is shown. So that's the essence of working in Storyline. Most of the interactivity you work with will be either a trigger that changes the state of an object on the screen or it's going to be a trigger that will show or hide information that you have on a layer. Now there are a lot of things you can do with Storyline. The first thing I recommend is watch those Getting Started tutorials. They'll answer a lot of the basic questions and help you get started. And then take advantage of the resources in the community. If you have any questions, jump in and ask and you'll get plenty of help. Now it's just a matter of you going out there practicing and building your first course.